The home video update is sponsored by you. Yes, you. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash home video update to join as a patron to unlock exclusive membership benefits. Thank you for supporting the home video update. Hi guys, it's Mike. It is 20 past 10 on the 15th of February 2023 and I am back. Um, I need to address something quickly before we begin about YouTube. Now, my podcast is held everywhere now. Um, iTunes, all these other places. But for some reason, Acast is having an issue putting out to YouTube for some people. So the only one that's showing there is the one from two weeks ago. Um... So I don't know what's going on there, if I'm honest. They've had a message on the site, and they don't know what they're doing. And they, they've they got a thing now where they can push out a YouTube version, which saves me doing it, which saves me a hell of a lot of time for making, you know, a video version of it. Um, but I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, to be honest. Um, I'm tempted to give them a little bit longer just to see if they can fix it. Um but if not, I'll probably have to download it and go and sort of encode it as a video or something like that. I have no idea what on earth is going wrong with it. Um, so I'm just going to check quickly if they've got any updates on their website. I did look yesterday and it was still the same thing. Some people are having issues with YouTube uploads. It's probably the same thing. I've tried sort of um, unpublishing it and publishing it again. And it didn't seem to work for some reason. Let's have a look. Logging into ACAST now. I've used a few other podcast apps in the past. But this was like the better one because it was free, no limits. Plus they'd make you a YouTube version as well. Um, Which made my life a lot easier. But for some reason... I don't know quite what's going on with it. There's something that's not clicking in or something not going over. Um, so I say, worst comes to worst, I will have to download it and have a look. Let's have a look at this last episode. So there we go. 10th February, published. Um, Publish settings. We will now... So if this does suddenly pop up and people are only listening on YouTube, you're going to get a two for one because you're going to get two episodes for the price of one because both are going to go up at the same time. Um, I only noticed the other day, no one mentioned that there had been a new episode because obviously my cadence isn't exactly regular for these updates. So, hey, fair, that's on me. But yeah, um, no idea. No idea why it didn't work. No idea why it didn't end up going over there. And no idea what's getting in the way of it. Um, there's no message on the website now, so maybe I'm just trying to log into YouTube and see. For some reason, my internet is running really slowly, and I don't think anything's downloading in the background, as far as I'm aware. Hmm. If 
That's very interesting. But, don't know. But yes, yeah, so um, we'll come back to that. Um, a question I did ask um, in the last episode for people that did hear it. Um, obviously, over on Patreon and on any of the podcast servers I use. Um, what's it called? Um, it's one I don't actually like, but it's the easiest one for me. How do you not say the name of your, your app? I can't remember what it's called now. Um, pod. Podcast Addict, that's the one. Um, let's see if the new episode is on the Well, last week's episode, anyway. That one there, that one there. Episodes. Yeah, it's on there. But it's shown it's published one minute ago. So maybe because I've published it again for the second time, it's kind of pushed out. Um... I'm not seeing it on YouTube. It might take a while in encode and go over, but keep an eye on there. Like I say, YouTube people, you might get a two for this week, which is great. Um, I did ask the question um, in an episode called Double Bills about what you'd like as a double bill. And SW Studio Productions on the Patreons did post a couple that you'd like to see. Um, so we've got um, Living Day, it's a License to Kill. Well, obviously, I'm behind that. I think Spencer would be behind that as well because... Hey, why, why, why would you not? Um, they are the two best Bond films. Uh, and not two best. Two of my favourite Bond films. Um, the only two I saw in the cinema um, recently. I saw Living Daylights in the cinema. And I now watch the 35mm version of Licence Skill. Um, the amazing experience seeing on the big screen. Star Trek 6 and First Contact. Yeah, yeah, I'd go with that. They are the two best. Probably my two favourites that aren't Wrath of Khan. Um, I have a big, big soft spot for Star Trek VI. Um, and Batman, Mass Phantasm and The Crow. No reason love to see it happen. I think they are kind of intrinsically linked. I think Mass of the Phantasm is really dark for a, um, a quote-unquote kids cartoon. It's like really like dark and moody and, you know, Batman gives no fucks. He literally like smashes people in. The type of things where you think it always struck me there's one scene in that right at the beginning where um there's a gut a crook underneath a table and rather than like kick the gun away that he's reaching for he stamps on the table so it hurts the crook and i'm like that's you know that's way darker than i thought it would be um but I've always liked Mass the Phantasm. I've got the Blu-ray now. I've got the um, French box set with um, oh, Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero, which is a lesser animated quote-unquote movie, but it's it's still pretty good. Um, so, yeah, hopefully keep an eye out on YouTube. I'll keep an eye out as well, see if it does pop up. So what have I been watching? Um, not a huge amount. I've been working a lot, and I'm traveling a lot further at the moment. Um my training for the new job is all over the place, which isn't a bad thing because, like, the one that I'm in now, the cinema I'm in now, does have um, a Screen X, a 4DX, a 4K super screen with a barcode projector. Now, there's a bit more technical fun, but it's also mixed with, like, 25-year-old technology. So it's a big mix of different things. I now know why. I don't know if I said this in the last one. When I saw Top Gun Maverick in Screen X in that cinema, um, the center screen was washed out, but that's because it's like an ancient NEC Xenon, and the projectors on the sides are brighter because they're newer. It's just technology moved on that much. Um, so I'll hopefully not try and recap myself, because um, I'm terrible for not listening to my old episodes, but I'm pretty sure I didn't talk about these two. Um, so we have All Cry on the Western Front, the Netflix new version of the book. Um, I won't say much apart from it looks beautiful. It's very well shot. It's very dark, very bleak, uh, not very nice. It's very much an anti-war movie. It's not so Private Ryan. There's no gloss. There's no real happy endings, but it is very, very good. Um, I watched it. That was the thing. I watched it. I started watching it 
And it kept saying to 5.1. I'm like, I'm sure this is an Atmos mix. This is really weird. But I carried on and then realised, like, oh, God, that film. Is it Melanie Laurent? The film that came up, the space film directed by, was it Anne Sandra Michelle? I can't remember. It was like a lockdown movie where this woman was stuck in a capsule, Netflix movie. That was only Atmos on the French version. I didn't realise that it wasn't an English movie. This I knew was German, but didn't know what the American language was. So um, I had to go back and change it to German to hear the Atmos sound. And I'm glad I did because it was a very, very aggressive mix. Um, I unboxed my young Sherlock Holmes steelbook, as I said before, love this movie. One of my favourite Sherlock depictions. Steelbook is love of the disc is subpar. Um, it's a very old master, Paramount have DNR'd it. It doesn't look good, there's some motion smearing. It just looks crap. I mean, it's better than the DVD. Um, the only laser disc I've got is a Japanese 4x3 laser disc, which is fine. But if I have to watch Young Sherlock Holmes, I'd do that. It turns out I grew up um, in a place called Christchurch in Dorset. And they have an old cinema there called The Regent. Um, I met a guy um, who knows the manager of the cinema I'm training in called Steve, who is like a person after my own heart. Like the stuff we're into is exactly the same. And it was fascinating talking to him. He's like, oh, there's this little cinema in... um, in this place called Christchurch. I went, oh, it's the region. I saw Under Siege there in 1991. Underage, may I add. And they've got a thing called Dirt in the Gate, who do a series of films, and they're showing, like, Robocop 35mm on the 10th of March. Um, what else are they showing? And they're doing With No One Eye, um, which I really want to see. There you go, Logan's Run, 35mm. Cinema Paradiso, 35mm. I mean, that's awesome. They've got such good stuff there. I'm going to have to go down and, like, see something there because there's so many things I want to see and it saves me going to London. It's a lot nearer. Spaceballs, 35mm. I mean, these are stuff that, yeah, a lot of these places show again and again and again. But they did show um, Jaws 3D. That'd be amazing. Um, yeah, they did show um, Yo Sherlock Holmes. And I was gutted when I found out they showed it because I missed it. I'd love to have seen that. Flesh for Frankenstein 3D. But for some reason, I had no idea it was a thing, and I completely missed out on it. Because um, I'd have killed to have seen that in 35mm. I did originally when it came out, obviously. Um, yeah, it's good enough for now. It needed a 4K remaster. I mean, it still looks great if it had a better disc in. If it had a 4K disc, that'd be amazing, but I don't think everyone's going to go for that. Um, then I watched the Spielberg film I've never seen. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen every single one of his films. Well, I've seen them all the way through, especially when younger. Like things like The Colour Purple, a hard watch. Um, 1941, a hard watch. Um, or <clears throat> um, I've seen it and forgotten it and haven't seen it more than once. I'm pretty sure I've seen every single one of his films. Except for The Post, the Mel Street Tom Hanks movie. Um, it's really good. Like, really good. It's not showy, it's not flashy. It's very much a small story a big story in real life obviously with you know Watergate and all these other things um and it's fantastic to watch but I don't know why I missed out on it. It's very good looking. It's very well shot. It's very well directed, obviously. Um, but I think it's more the fact that I saw the food. And it was, yeah, it's really good. I think people should watch it. I think it was slept on, like the Fablemans is being. And it's a shame because it doesn't deserve it. I watched Hella High Water, which is Taylor Sheridan's movie before he went fully yellow, stony, right wingy, you know, Bible belty, Bible baiting even. Um, I love this movie so much. I mean, he didn't direct this. He directed Wind River, I think, which was next, which was based on the success of this. He got Wind River as a directing gig. I like Wind River as well, especially the end of it. Um, This is amazing. It's an amazing film. I haven't got the 4K. I've only got the Blu-ray. Blu-ray still looks really good. Um, Chris Prine, Ben Foster, and Jeff Bridges. Bridges is amazing. This Chris Prine, I still think, is the best Chris. I think it's fantastic. Literally 
a great, great, great little thriller. Um, the sound mix is really good for a modern movie. It's nail biting. It's it tells a really good story. Uh, Dave McKenzie does some really good direction with it. It's it's fantastic. Um, I think it's one of these things that's been slept on. They've got a 4K out, which apparently doesn't look very good. Um, but I think that people should get out there. I mean, it's nominated for Oscars and things, and it very well should have should be. Um, I think it's really good, like really, really, really clever. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's one of these films that wasn't like a whiz bang action thriller, so people kind of slept on it. And I think they shouldn't have done. If you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend it. And yesterday, um, I went to my cinema to um, pick some stuff up and do some stuff after I finished working in the training cinema. And I'd paid for parking. I was stuck there for a couple of hours because I paid for parking. I could have left. Um, we've still got a broken screen with broken air conditioning, so it's freezing in there. and We can't let normal people in there. But um, I looked what was on the projector, so what was on its server. And... They had a, night, um, a knock at the cabin, and I haven't seen it. So I like M. Light Shama Ding Dong. I think he is... That's not a racist comment. It's just a silly name. Um, I think he's very hit or miss. I love The Village. I love Unbreakable. I love um, Signs, Sixth Sense. Um, I liked Split. I hated Glass. Hated it. Uh, I have watched Lady in the Water. Um... But I really like the idea of this. I mean, someone was saying on a podcast I was listening to the other day that I was watching wrestling in the late 90s, early 2000s. And if you had told me that in a few years that The Rock, Cena and Dave Bautista were all actors in Hollywood movies, I wouldn't have believed you. And if you'd have told me that Dave Bautista was the best actor out of all of them, I definitely wouldn't have believed you. Bautista holds this movie. Jonathan Goff is great. Don't get me wrong. He's fantastic in a lot of stuff he's in. Um, But this is a whole other thing. I mean, he is absolutely fantastic in this. Um, It's really weird. Um, I mean, luckily, it's a short movie and held my attention because it was quite cold in there. It wasn't cold, 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 but it was cold enough. Um, But it's... I think I described it as preposterous stupid nail-biting funny exciting um like everything at once like it wasn't it didn't know what it wanted to be but was good about that like i can normally figure out what's going to happen in a story quite early on especially his films i find them more predictable than most people do especially when you know there's going to be a twist my brain will go and try and work it out and yeah i mean i It kept throwing me for a loop, I'm not going to lie. There were times where I thought, oh, I've got this. And there were times where I thought, oh, shit, I have no idea what's... Oh, no, maybe not. You know, it really did surprise me, and it's very good. And Batista is the best thing in it by far. Um, Rupert Grint's in it. Um, He's he's fine. I think Abby... Oh, what was her name? Abby... I've never seen her anything else. Abby Quinn. She was fantastic. Um... I can't remember the other guy's name. Ben Aldridge. What has he been in? It seems like I've recognised him from somewhere, but not from Fleabag. Never seen. A lot of English stuff that I've literally not seen. English TV stuff. John McGough I know from, like, Mindhunter, Matrix, Frozen. What else was he in? Oh, he's in Invincible. Oh, I didn't realise that. Um... But yeah, I think he's been really good in a lot of things, and he's very good in this. Oh, he's in Glee, wasn't he? Uh, of course he was. Um, yeah, I, I I enjoyed Knock at the Cabin. I would recommend it. I mean, a lot of people have been very divisive on it. I I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. But I went in thinking it was going to be rubbish, and I was only going to see it for Batista, to be honest. Not much anything else. Um, I am this week seeing Ant-Man. Um, rather than go to any of the cinemas that I you know work in, I'm going to the IMAX to see it um, because it's IMAX 3D and IMAX 3D is the best 3D. Because I have access for another couple of weeks to this cinema with a Screen X and a 4DX, what I might do is stay on 
late or come in early on a shift and watch it in all all the formats just to see what the best one is because I've never seen a full movie in 4DX. I've seen like the theme park version of 4DX, like the little quick thing, but I've never seen a full film. So I thought that would be interesting to do. Um, someone did set up for me. Um, someone's training me who is, she is very good at her job. She's very, very good at the AV side and she knows pretty much everything. Like really, really, really clever. Um, yeah, she um, set up a trailer reel for me. So she went to screenwriter, set up a trailer reel. Um, it's in Jan Jones, Quantumania. What else did she put on there? Guns of the Galaxy, Volume 3. Um, and a few other ones and just ran it through and trailers are way more violent than the actual film but Indian Jones especially nearly threw me out of the seat it was stupid violent like there's a bit with water and it rocks the seats oh Shazam was the other one um, every punch and every whip thing had the um, air blowers going off and the ticklers going off it was it was genuinely fun um, people sitting there for Titanic and Am Avatar at the moment it's like four hours of that I don't think I could deal with especially for films that are for me um and, and because it's just around two hours might be the right sweet spot so what i might do on an early shift if there's a film uh, showing starting around that time or on an early i might talk to him and say hey look if i come in two hours before my shift um starts and there's nothing in the screen x can you whack it on for me you know see what they say because it's not my cinema so i can't really you know, play that much if they say no they say no but at the moment i know that you know, because there's no one can go in that screen in my cinema. Um, it's just sitting there doing nothing. So you can transfer something over to it, but it does take about half an hour, even with like the super fast like, server we've got, because they're reasonably big files. Um, so it's just, because I saw a doc of the cabin because the only thing on there it was that Matilda, I want to dance with somebody and a few others, and most of them didn't have their keys anymore, so you couldn't watch them, but cabin was still on there, still valid keys, so... Hey, it works. Um, it's a 2K projector. They've got 4K upgrade capability, but it's 2K in the, the model we've got. Um, and it's a 4K DCP, but it looked quite good. Um, it was a screen that is the kind of like flat, really. Um, not flat as in, you know, not curved, but flat as in like 1.85 to 1-ish. Um, so you do get black bars, but it's actually quite black on this. It was a bit raised in plain in the same screen. So I have to have a play and see what's going on because me and the general manager both want the best AV quality because you've got to go against competitors. You've got to do it with something else. So that's what we do. So on with the news. Um, one I'm definitely going to buy come payday is City Lost Children. The French release has been announced. Um, Studio Canal. Um, I don't know anything about subtitles yet, which is annoying. I hope it has subtitles. If it does, I'm all the way in. But it's only 25 quid for the 4K, which is really, really interesting. So fingers crossed it has subtitles because I I need I need that. And I'm not paying the stupid inflated um, price that they're charging for the um, American version because it only comes in that Sony box set, which is a complete waste of time and money. Um, if you don't want all those films, and I don't want all those films. I mean, Run Low the Run, maybe. Um, definitely that. Um, so I'm going to have to wait for the the French version and hope it has subtitles. Um, it might do. They're, they're, they tend to be okay with um, Studio Canal, but it might now be an English version. You never know. Um, Warner Brothers and their 100th anniversary. This is a fucking nightmare. So... They're releasing a 4K box set, and they're releasing box sets on Blu-ray as well. Now, they are two very different things for very different titles. Most of these um, are reprints of older, originally released 4Ks, most of which should have um, a upgraded disc really by now like new encoding or the original audio and they go back and do something else but for some reason they they just haven't bothered uh well not for some reason obviously cost and whatever else they should have gone back and done some more work um 
but they just they just didn't, which sucks. Um, I can't find a listing for the American box. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Do, 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 do. So, the 4K one, if I can find the link to say what's on it all. Come on, load up. Why is my internet, like, dying on its ass today? I don't know what's going on. Right, so, this is 100 years celebrating every story. So, this is the 4K box set. It has classic Hollywood, 2001 Space Odyssey, Casablanca, Citizen Kane, Cool Hand Luke, which is new, East of Eden, which is new, Maltese Falcon, which is new, Real Without a Cause, which is, I think, new as well, Rio Bravo, definitely new, Sing in the Rain, old, Wizard of Oz, old, New Hollywood, 70s to 80s, Clockwork Orange, Batman, Blade Runner, Beetlejuice, Enter the Dragon, Exorcist, which is new, same with Enter the Dragon, The Goonies, Superman the Movie, the Shining, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Modern Blockbusters. Star is Born, Argo, Elvis, Goodfellas, It, Mad Max Fury Road, The Matrix, Shawshank Redemption, Training Day, and Unforgiven. It's a real shitty just, just choice. It's it's random. Especially the modern blockbusters. Superman the movie is getting a new um, release potentially in the box set that's coming out. So it could be a remastered picture. It could be... Different sound mixes, we don't know details. We know it's the five movie collection, but it's only got four movies, but two versions of the Donner Cut. So Superman Returns isn't in it. Um, I get that, but they should do what they did on DVD and Blu-ray, which is called the Christopher Reeve collection, which makes sense. And then you do Superman Returns separately. Or we do the Superman collection, which has Superman Returns in it. I don't know what they're playing at. It's a bit weird, but hey, okay, you do you. Um... It really needs to be new extras um, and new discs on these, but I seriously doubt it is. Um, which is a big shame. Because I'm not paying 300 fucking quid for something that's barely an upgrade. Now, there was word, I think it's Rio Bravo. Does it say here? Yeah. I think it's Rio Bravo is exclusive to this set, is what they said. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, can't find much information about this. I think it's more thought fans found this out than anything else. However, Rio Bravo isn't getting a separate release apart from in the in Europe, like UK, US. Uh, Um, which is a bit different. So it's not exclusive to the set apart from in the US. Um, that has been confirmed yet. But the other ones new in the set, apart of some of them have been announced so far. So you've got the Maltese Falcon, Cool Hand Luke, Rebel Light Cause, all out in April, all in still books. Very big. There are four. So there's award winners, comedy, dramas, and musicals, fantasy, action, adventure, thrillers, spy, and horror. Um, and they're like $200 each. So they're fucking expensive for what they are. But they're 25 collections. So award winners, things got things like Cool Hand Luke, Bullet, Departed, Argo, Key Largo, things like that. Comedy, dramas, and musicals, Gremlins, Goonies, Star is Born, Dr. Zhivago. Invictus, Hairspray, Elf. They're old, old discs they've just shoved in. Nice boxes. Um, fantasy, Action, and Adventure, Never Ending Story, Supergirl. Really? Interesting. Superman, Lethal Weapon, Batman, Man of Steel, Dark Knight, Joker, Shazam. Really? Aquaman, Su- The Suicide Squad, the good one. Fantastic Beasts. Really? Okay. Mm, okay. Um, Thriller, Sci Fi, and Horror. Nightmare on Elm Street, which is weird because I didn't think they'd be re-releasing that. Natural Born Killers. Ooh, I hope that's a new disc. All Presidents Men, The Shining, Blade Runner, The Final Cut, Worst Cut. It's it's interesting, but it's it's such a weird mismatch of ideas, and I don't really get it. 
Um, next we have a film I did watch actually. I did watch this and I didn't check. I didn't say I checked it in. Um, shit. So I, this will go back into what we watch. Um, Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. Um, a film I absolutely loved. It turns out I hadn't seen the first one. I thought I had. Turns out I hadn't. I loved this. I thought the painterly look to the animation was gorgeous. Um, when it goes from ones, so animating on every frame, to like twos, where it's 12 frames, like anime sort of style, when it goes into fights, it was really, really good. Voice acting was amazing. The laughs came thick and fast. Um, I really enjoyed this. You know, I had no idea Florence Pugh was in it. I had no idea that Ray Winston was in it, Olivia Coleman. I knew that Banderas was in it and obviously Sama Hayek as Kitty Softballs again, but I watched them both. I watched Puss in Boots 1 and 2. Um, 2 is miles better and I really enjoyed it. Um, so that's coming out in 4K, which is great. Um, I will pick that up. Um, Plane is coming out on March the 28th. Um, it's fun. It's stupid. I would get it in a cell in a 2 for 30 or something like that. I would... Yeah, a two for a three for thirty or some deal. I'd happily pick up playing because it's good fun. I love it's called Mayday in France as well. That's quite funny. Radiance Films new Blu-ray releases. We have Yakuza Graveyard, The Br- Blight. Oh my god, I can't speak. The Bride Wore Black. That's better. She Dies Tomorrow. The Working Class Goes to Heaven and Cutter's Way Standard Edition. Because I think did like a more expensive version of Cutter's Way. Um, Yakuza Graveyard, I remember liking. I can't remember much about it, but I remember liking it. Um, in Cutter's Way, I, I seem to remember more. Oh, I need to catch up on some of these things. But it's a solidness that is very Radiance-based. Very much her thing. So, 29th to the 8th, 23, there is a Toxic Avenger 4K Blu-ray collection. Which is neat. I know they're doing a new one with... Um, Oh, God, what's his name? Tyrion Lannister in Game of Thrones. Oh, God, I can't remember his name now. Shit. He did Cyrano de Bergerac, didn't he? Can't remember his name. But they're doing the new one. Um, and this is obviously done to cash in on that. So Toxic Avenger, Toxic Avenger 2, Toxic Avenger Part 3, Last Temptation of Toxie, and Sits and Toxie, Toxic Avenger 4. No other details apart from that, but... I mean, that's cool um i think vinegar syndrome are working on it um from what rumors are saying which is kind of cool um a film i used to watch as a kid in fact two films coming up they used to watch the kid all the time richard Pryor, critical condition um is a michael apted film yeah michael apted film i used to love this movie me and brother used to watch this and moving all the time it's like heavy um rotation on vhs used to watch it all the time and I haven't seen it since. I have not seen it since VHS. So I'm going to have to have a look back and sort of have a look at this. Unfortunately, it's coming from the Twat Factory. um, And uh, yeah, no, I'm not a fan of this. We've we've been through this. I'm not going to rake it over, except for the next other two movies are also from them. Another film I actually owned digitally because I didn't think um, it would ever come out at all. Is Crazy People um, with Dudley Moore. I really like this movie. Another one we used to rent all the time. It's fun. It's sweet. Um, every time, time me and my brother see the word Sony written down, we say bony. It's it's like burnt into our heads forever, I think. Um, I like it. I think it's fun. It's nothing complicated. It's just a silly little thing. Um, Screen Factory are uh, distribute Blu-ray Def Crocodile's new 4K restoration of John Carpenter's class film Assault on Precinct 13. Uh, hopefully, that means that... Um, oh, who's the people in the UK that... Oh, I put it out. Second Sight, I think. Um, hopefully, they put it out because I don't want to touch anything with Shout Factory. Also, remake, please. Can we have the remake? The Ethan Hawke remake. I really like that remake. I think it's genuinely good. Um, I don't know if anyone have got issues with it out there. I mean, it's not... I mean, we're making classic stuff always gives people issues, but I really quite like it. Um, I think it's genuinely a good flick. So, um, weirdly, I've been thinking about something 
the last couple of days, it was based sort of like on the double bill things I said about in the last episode for the people that heard it. Um, because I was listening to the Week Planet podcast this morning, weirdly, and they hit on the same thing that said that for the series Caravan of Garbage, which isn't what it sounds like if you haven't seen it, it's worth seeing though, they're very good on YouTube. They wanted to do The Phantom, The Shadow, um, The Rocketeer, and Dick Tracy, like these real Silver Age heroes who they pulp heroes and go back and do those movies. And that was part of my thing. It's like I would do a, you know, with access to a cinema doing like star screenings of stuff, I would do like a Shadow and the Phantom double bill or the Rocketeer and the Shadow double bill. Basically anything in the shadow. I mean, the Rocketeer is still my favorite superhero movie, like by far. So that's always going to be like the main pick for me. Um, I've got the Blu-ray, the quote unquote anniversary edition that's got nothing on it and nothing exciting, but it has decent picture and decent sound. So it's as good as you're going to get. Unless Disney come along on Disney Plus and start upgrading their stuff to 4K, which they do do, to be fair. Um, They do quite a lot like randomly upgrade stuff, especially if they've got a sequel coming. Like they did Willow the other day and it looks amazing. Um, so they could come back and do the Rocketeer if they had a reason to. I know they did that new, oh, what was it like a kid's TV show or something like that, I think. I think it was a kid's TV show. Um, I think I've watched like a little bit of it, like a, a young girl who gets the rocket pack and Cliff Secord is actually in it. I think Billy Campbell might have actually voiced it. I might be very, very wrong in saying that, but that rings a bell at least. So they were talking about it because Warren Beatty did his usual rights grab for Dick Tracy, where he did um, a Zoom call basically with Leonard Martin, Moulton and someone else, where it's just like, I think it's called Dick Tracy Zooms In, which is random. Uh, but I rewatched that the other day, and it's like surprisingly dark and also surprisingly like sexually led i mean obviously he was having sex with madonna at the time and you know he he was that sort of the fario type person so that was who he was but it's just a little bit you know weird that he wants to hang on to the dick tracy writes mainly it seems out of spite because he doesn't want anyone to use them or something it's really strange because No one seems to want to make a Dick Tracy thing, including him. He was going to do that director's cut at one point, which before he dies, he's 85. Can he just make that director's cut of Dick Tracy? Because I want to see the extra bits and bobs. Um, But yeah, so I was thinking about, you know, these, these 90s superhero movies. You know, which ones are the good ones? Which ones are the ones worth watching? Um... You know, is there one that's better than the others? Is there one that, you know, holds up? Is there one that's good or one that's bad? I mean, what are the things that stand out as, you know, um, the ones that you want to watch over and over again? I mean... I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into this a little bit, but I'm also mostly gonna like go into the fact that some of these aren't comic book movies. Some of them are quote unquote superhero movies because they weren't necessarily all based on comic books. Some were, some weren't. Um, but obviously, things are gonna be different on different uh, not continents necessarily, but like different understandings of things or something else. So some of them work together, some don't. So, I mean, just going through a, let's get a list up. Let's get a Wikipedia list. Oh, there's not that many. That's pretty good. So this is really weird. There's the whole of the 1990s and there's less than like phase five, phase four of the whole Marvel MCU. So we will go alphabetical on here and we'll just, I'll, I'll highlight the ones that I like or whatever else. So, A, Alien Arsenal. Never heard of it. Don't know what that is. I'm going to click on that, though, because that sounds really weird. Alien Arsenal. Made of television science fiction film by David DeCocteau. Also known as Teenage Alien Avengers. 
Okay. Interesting. So, B, Barbed Wire, the remake of Casablanca, starring the combat character Barbed Wire, played by Pamela Anderson Lee at the time. Um, it's a bit shit, isn't it? it? It's just a bit shit. I mean, I think I talked about this before. It's one of these ones that I think you could remake and do quite well, but it's garbage, like really, really bad. Um, yeah, no. No, absolute garbage, that. Like, absolute garbage. We have Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. Best animated Batman thing ever. Mr. F- Batman of Three Sub-Zero, as mentioned before. Second best um, animated Batman thing, I'd say. Yeah, probably. Batman and Robin. <laughs> I liked it in the cinema. I liked it less since. I haven't seen it in a very long time. I'm in no hurry to watch it. Batman Forever. I like it. I think there is a darker... Well, we know there's a darker movie in there trying to get out. Um, but we're probably never going to see that, which is a shame because I think we should. But now Joel Schumacher's dead. We don't know what condition they're in, what condition the cut's in. I don't think we'll ever see it. We might see some like extra scenes here and there, but I still like it for what it is. Batman Returns is amazing. It's probably my favourite Batman movie by far. Um... I like 89 because it's set the stone, but I think that is the best because it's more Burton. Um, it's darker, it's grittier, it's kooky, ooky, spooky. It's the real Burton thing. Bionic Ever After. I don't know what that is. There's some really weird stuff. Oh, it's a Bon. Oh, it's the Sixty Million Dollar Man spinoff. Okay. Black Mask, the Jet Li film. It's fine. I don't remember a lot, a lot about it. It was okay. Um. Blade, great. I talked about it the other day. I like Blade and Blade 2. Um, I like some of Blade Trinity. I actually want to watch Blade 2 in the cinema at work because it's so loud. My neighbours are pissed off enough as it is, let alone playing that, and it might blow my speakers. Because something about that film, it's like it has the the um, Farfield cinema mix on the disc because it's so loud. Um, Blank Man, is, that, is it Marlon Wayans? Damon Wayans. Yeah, it's not very good. Um, Captain America, the 1990 film with Albert, by Albert Pune. It's something I used to rent as a kid. It's shit. Albert Pune did direct some good films. I talked about that on the um, episode after he died. I like Cyborg a lot. I've got the poster up behind my head, weirdly. It's it's fine. It's a good little film. It's It's okay, but it's cheap shit, and it knows it's cheap shit. The Crow! talked about that earlier um it's great um i like the crow 2 city of angels it's okay it's not good but it's okay um the crow though it's just exceptional filmmaking you know um alex Proyas did uh, dark city afterwards which is again amazing and then fell off a cliff because he went a bit weird from what i remember no on the Crow, Crow City of Angels, I like it. I mean, I want to see a director's cut. The extended version that Miramax did is garbage. The wine scene's got their hands on it, recut it and destroyed it. It's not good in the current form. I want to see Tim Pope's original version. I think it's going to be a much better film. Then we have the three Ds. There's more Ds, but three Ds in a row. So Dark Man, Dark Man 2, The Return of Durant, Dark Man 3, Die, Dark Man, Die. Best said about this is Dark Man is amazing. It's a Sam Raimi film, so obviously... I'm very, very, very biased. However, it's genuinely a good film. Dark Man is amazing. Everyone watch Dark Man. Dark Man is fantastic. Deadly Incredible Hulk, a TV movie. I think that's the one with Daredevil and Thor in it, maybe. Let's have a look. Not seeing Daredevil and Thor. Um... It doesn't say anything about it. I might think it's the Charlie the Incredible Hulk then. Yeah, yeah. And there's going to be a sequel with Iron Man in it. That'd have been interesting to see. Dr. Mordred, a film that just came out. I think Shout Factory released it um, on Blu-ray. Um, it's okay. Jeffrey Coombs is in it, which is fun. It's a full entertainment thing, which is fun, but it's... 
I think it's very good. It's basically Doctor Strange um, without Doctor Strange. So basically they, I think they had the license and lost the license. Uh, it's not very good. It's it's silly. The Fantastic Four, the Roger Corman version never came out. Um, I've never watched the full thing. I've watched tons of videos on it. I've watched the great documentary Doomed, which is very worth watching. It used to be on Amazon Prime. If it still is, I th- think you should watch it. Generation X, the film with Matt Fuhrer. Um, it's it's okay. I watched it as a kid. It was a pilot. Yeah, pilot for New World Entertainment. It's okay. It's fine. It's not good. Um, but it is like an official like Marvel production technically. It's it's okay. Um, Judge Dredd. I like Judge Dredd. I've been on record as saying this. I would do a double bill. I said last week of the Slice Stone Judge Dredd and the new Judge Dredd. I like them both for different, very different reasons. Um, Just League of America. That was a TV movie which is disastrous. The Weekly Planet did an episode on that. It's well worth watching. The Mask. The Mask is great. Chuck Russell movie, very dark, very dank, very fun in places, but a little bit near the knuckle nowadays going back and looking at it. You think, hmm, don't really know about that. Maybe it's, yeah, maybe not some of those choices nowadays, but it's, it's still, I still think it's still genuinely very good. My Morphin Power Rangers movie. Never into Power Rangers. I was too old for it. Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. The, um, the Eva Hasselhoff version. Um, again, Weekly Band done a great episode on this. David Goyer wrote it. It's shit. Um, I've seen it a couple of times. I really hate it. It's not very good. The Phantom. I like The Phantom. The Phantom is a great little pulp film that should have done way, 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 way more than it did. Robocop 2 and 3. Now, technically, they are comic movies because Frank Miller wrote them and his scripts got turned into a comic book. I've got the comic book um, or graphic novel. It's The graphic novel's better. I will fight anyone who says Robocop 2 is bad. 3, sure. 3 is shit. I saw 3 in the cinema. It's not very good. 2 is genuinely exciting and fun and has some great moments. Um, it's again, like, like I've said this many times, it's one of those films that you want to have a shower afterwards because you feel dirty for watching it because it's really grotty and dirty. But I, I really like Robocop 2. The Shadow! Never heard of it. No, we, we know my love of The Shadow. Russell Mulcahy's really, really great superhero movie. Spawn! Saw that in the cinema. Had a headache afterwards. because the C- And then on Laserdisc, the CGI was so low res, it made my head hurt in hell. Like, it gave me eye strain. Really not good, but I need to rewatch it again just because of, you know, the really good, like, uh, costume work. And then the best Superman movie, Steel, with Shaquille O'Neal. What a piece of shit that movie. It's just boring more than anything else. Like, absolutely boring. It's just preposterous. Um, Tank Girl. I've been on record. I love Tank Girl. Um, Rachel Talley movie. It's great. I've got the German media book release i think it's underrated i think it's genuinely a good fun little movie it's bonkers but i love it for that then we have the turtles trilogy the one good one teenage mutant Ninja turtles which i watched again a couple of years back really dark really gritty there's a theme here steve barron so the, when they got video um music video directors to make movies um steve barron was like a go-to same as um tim pope for the crow secret of the ooze only good for Kevin Ash and Vanilla Ice. Ninja Turtles 3. Oh, God. Night Night Through, I was 13. And I saw that in the cinema. I knew better at that age. And the Turbo Power Rangers movie. Not seen it either. That's not great, is it, really? I mean, that's not fantastic. Um, there's not a lot there. Oh, there's got extra bits, actually. So we've got Orgasmo, which is under comedy superhero movies, which is fun. And Mystery Men, which is a big missing one. I love Mystery Men. Mystery Men's great. Um, I think the Mystery Men is, like, very underrated. I need to pick up the Kino 4K. I've got the 88 Films Blu-ray version, um, which I really like. But I haven't actually got the 4K. Um, I think it's definitely worth getting the 4K, just because it's not a great-looking movie, but I think it's a good movie. Um and definitely one that people should be paying more attention to. 
especially since most of the cast sort of broke out after it. Ben Stiller wasn't the biggest thing in the world at that point. However, he very soon became the biggest thing in the world. So, well, at that time anyway, Eddie Izzard as well, you know, is one of his first American films. I like Mystery Man a lot. I think that if you haven't seen it in years or you've never seen it at all, go back and watch it. Um, because I think you might actually enjoy it. If you get the Kino 4K especially, I've got to pick that up. I know the 8 films release is still quite good, but I will pick that up. So again, throwing the forum out there. What do you think of 90s superhero movies? Do you think they're better? Do you think they're worse? Do you think they're good? Bad? Do you think that we've come a long way? I mean, back then I can remember thinking, oh my God, they might make a movie about whatever, you know, X-Men or Spider-Man or something like that. You never think they actually would. Or they talk about it for years, like James Cameron's Spider-Man, and it never happened. But now we've got such a deluge of choice that I think we're shocked about it all. We're like, oh my God, what's going on? Oh, wow, that's amazing. And I think choice is a bad thing because we've got that point where we're apparently all burnt out. Oh, no, I'm looking forward to Ant-Man. I don't care if the reviews are like mixed or worse. I don't care. I want to see Paul Rudd. I want to see Kang. I want to see Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer. I want to see that movie. So, you know what? I'm going to go see that movie, funnily enough. It's it's just as simple as that. Do I want to see the film? Yes. Will I go and see the film? Yes. There we go. Done. Easy peasy, isn't it? So, yeah, let me know what you think of Night Superhero movies. Which ones do you like the best, the worst? Um, Avengers, you can throw in as well. It's technically sort of that comic booky style. Um, the... I say the good Avengers, but the other Avengers, the one that Spencer and I did a whole episode about. Yeah, let me know what you think. Um, what's good, what's bad, what you remember, what you don't remember, what you think about checking out now. So, yeah, um, next time I'll talk about Ant-Man and the IMAX experience. If I've seen them in more than one format as well, if I see Screen X or if I see um, 4DX, I might go 4DX, actually. What I think of those formats and what it's like. Um, so yeah, until then, it's Mike saying see you next time.